hello and welcome to the Scrabble channel. Today, let me show you what it's like to game on a 32-bit gaming PC in 2018. If you're wondering why, the purpose of this video is to explore, test, and see why 32-bit Windows is nearing the end of its lifespan. I find this particularly interesting since nobody yet has really covered this topic on YouTube and seeing how fast 32-bit support is being dropped from staple PC programs, I thought I'd visit 32-bit Windows 10 before it leaves us for good. But of course, I want to take advantage of this rare opportunity and see if there really is a difference between 32-bit and 64-bit windows for every day-to-day -day gaming or for just all fancy numbers that don't mean anything. Before I begin, I want to give you guys a run-through of the main differences between a 32-bit and a 64-bit version of Windows. And to put it simple, 32-bit Windows offers a 32-bit register for the CPU, and 64-bit Windows offers a 64-bit register for the CPU. If you don't know what that is, it's basically like RAM on roids. It's a very small amount, yet extremely fast storage device in your CPU that is only meant to compute basic operations. What this means is that if you have a 64-bit version of Windows, you can utilize twice the CPU register width as a 32-bit version of Windows. And this difference scales throughout all memory types that your PC has, most notably amongst PC gamers being the RAM. Anyways, I'm going to quickly blow your minds for a second, but if you raise 2 to the 32nd, you get this big number, or also known as 4 gigabytes. And if you raise 2 to the 64th and you get this even larger number, it's also known as 16 exabytes are also known as 16 billion gigabytes. And that right there is how much maximum RAM can be supported by a 32-bit and 64-bit version of Windows, which is the primary reason why 32-bit Windows is dying. And now for a bit of history over the demise of 32-bit Windows. In 2003, AMD brought the first 64-bit processor to the market, that being the AMD Operton, and because of that first-of-a-kind desktop 64-bit processor, Microsoft was forced to produce a beta version of 64-bit Windows XP in order to have support for this brand new type of processor. 10 years later, Apple releases their first mobile 64-bit processor, that being the Apple A7 chip, and then literally just a year later in terms of gaming software, Watch Dogs became the first major PC title to not have 32-bit Windows support in its system requirements. And then fast forward four years later and Apple completely drops 32-bit support for iOS 11 and Nvidia stops making drivers for 32-bit systems. So what's the huge deal? Does 32-bit Windows just really suck for gaming and computing in the year 2018? Is that 32-bit register and 4GB RAM cap really that much of a holdover to cause all of these 32-bit system support drops as of recent? For that, I took some benchmarks. To see if there's a difference, I hooked up Spark with a spiffy brand new version of Windows 10 32-bit. And with this, my goal is to compare as many games as I can from my original Spark video where I was running it with a 64-bit version of Windows 10 versus it now running a 32-bit version of Windows 10. I also kept the drivers and overclock speeds of the GPU and CPU the exact same as well. And now, onto the benchmarks or should I say, lack thereof. Benchmarking 32-bit Windows with supposed compatible 32-bit games was a nightmare. Beginning with my main contender CSGO, despite the game starting on both maxed out and low settings, the game would just not actually load in, which was a major problem. 
On top of that, there were a plethora of Steam games that had the option for me to download them rather than not having the option to install them at all, yet when I actually installed them and I attempted to run them, they still came up with an error saying that I needed a 64-bit version of Windows to run the game. But luckily, I did manage to benchmark some games that actually ran on a 32-bit version of Windows 10. First off, Rocket League showed promise as at 1080p completely maxed out achieved an average frame rate of 154.49 frames per second, which I would say is certainly in the same ballpark in terms of performance as in any other i3 and GTX 1050 running on 64-bit Windows. Like I said, due to my game selection, I decided to benchmark Portal 2 just for the heck of it, and that game didn't show any signs whatsoever of slowing down as it achieved an average frame rate of 282.7 frames per second. But from there on out, things just got kind of weird. I mean, I benchmarked Warframe at 1080p maxed out and actually got poorer FPS performance running with a 32-bit version of Windows versus what I originally benchmarked on Spark on 64-bit Windows at 1440p maxed out. The last game I benchmarked was StarCraft, and despite the memory warnings that it gave me for my limited RAM capacity due to the 32-bit register, it still let me run the game at 1080p ultra settings at a respectable frame rate. So after these disappointing benchmarks I got, I think we can all conclude that 32-bit Windows for PC gaming is now officially irrelevant. The newest hit Steam game to come out as of recent is Kingdom Come Deliverance, and if you look in the system requirements, there is no support whatsoever for 32-bit Windows, so I expect this trend to occur for every new PC gaming coming out from here on out. So the moral of the story is, always go with a 64-bit Windows for your next gaming PC. And as always, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and all that, and this is the Scavel Channel, signing out.